This is the fifth and probably final part in a series of videos in which I've been attempting to repair this Rigel DP832 power supply. The issue I was having with it initially was that uh, it was uh, randomly resetting itself. It's something it's done since it was new but recently it got uh, much worse and it was resetting itself up to about a hundred times a day and it had become completely unusable so I decided it was time to investigate it um, with hindsight. I should have done this uh, a long time ago. And um, what I found was that there was a, a huge amount of um, switching noise on one of the internal uh, DC to DC converter output lines. And it's the one that fed the uh, daisy chain of voltage regulators for the main microprocessor. And um, what I ended up doing was putting a series of capacitors on that line. So um, the final tally was a 330 microfarad uh, capacitor, a 33 microfarad, a 100N, 10 and 1N capacitors. And I removed the original capacitor that has most likely failed. Um, it's now been running for a total of around uh, four days. This is the fifth day it's been running without a single reset. Um, I put this on a uh, long-term test yesterday and it's just been running ever since and I'm going to leave it running indefinitely to see what happens. Uh, I will come back and make another video uh, if anything uh, untoward happens. Um, but it's, as I say, been running without a single reset. Just waiting there to see if it decided to reset at that point. But um, it's been running without a single reset for um, quite a few days now. And since I did the final reassembly, it's had a, uh, a continuous, about 30 hours uh, run time. And uh, as I say, not a single reset. So it's looking quite promising. Now, um, in response to my previous video, one of the uh, subscribers sent me some interesting information. He decided to tear his Rigel apart and uh, potentially fit um, the capacitors to um, make sure that this didn't start happening to his. Now his is a new, uh, much newer uh, supply than mine. I bought this back in, I think, 2014 or 2015, so it's quite old. Um, his was bought in 2019, I believe, and it uh, appears um, when he opened it that Rigel were aware of this issue and how to fix it. And uh, his machine already had the factory fitted bulge capacitor in place. Um, it's a bit of a messy bodge they'd done, but um, at least they'd done something. It's just a pity they didn't release this as uh, technical bulletin information to owners that are reporting this problem. Instead, their response is, um, it's not on the warranty, send it back, we'll charge you £500 to repair it, which is about what the supply cost in the first place. So, I made this series of videos um, hoping to help anyone that's got one of these, and hopefully it will. Uh, you can uh, apply this uh, fix yourselves in 15-20 minutes for about uh, 20 pence worth of components. And it is just literally a case of fitting that series of capacitors on the 4.2 volt rail. Uh, you also may want to fit the larger heatsink on the regulator on the top analogue board if yours has got the older version uh, as mine did. Um, if it already has the larger heat sink, then you probably don't need to touch that. Uh, one other thing that I noticed that um, this fix also uh, resolved was that this supply has always had a voltage offset, small voltage offset. So currently I've got so this set to one volt. And if I turn this on, you can see that uh, on the Agilent uh, bench multimeter, uh, and on the Kunkin electronic load, we're getting uh, very similar matching uh, results. Um, the Agilent is calibrated, so that's uh, quite accurate, but it's reading within a couple of millivolts of the Rigel. Now, the Rigel does have the uh, millivolt and milliamp option, so it does read to three decimal places. It's currently set to exactly one volt, and you can see uh, the output is very close. And also the um, the watt reading is on zero, as is the current. Now the current used to be a bit of an issue. It always used to read something. Now there is some leakage on the capacitors on the output of this uh, supply, some large capacitors uh, across the output terminals, and they do leak a little bit. So it does tend to start showing a current uh, when you increase the voltage. 
but even with zero volt set I was getting uh, firstly an offset on the voltage especially on the output it, it didn't vary once it was set but there was a kind of a step offset of uh, anything up to 12 millivolts so if I did this previously I might end up with 10 or 12 millivolts showing on the uh, multimeter and uh, not only that but it's now much more stable it's a very uh, nice stable supply and uh, the upshot was that even though I had the millivolt option I couldn't really set it to the nearest millivolt so we've got voltage uh, selected if I go across to the last decimal place and change this it's currently reading just around uh, one millivolt I haven't calibrated this by the way if I now increase the output by one millivolt notice that the output now goes up by exactly one millivolt if I go up one more millivolt it's going up by around two millivolts it wasn't doing that before it was kind of making uh, fairly random jumps in um, anything between sort of two and twelve millivolts so um, it seems to have resolved that problem as well and now when I set um, an actual voltage um, I'm getting something very close to exactly what it should be we set two volts and I've tested this on all three outputs and they're all behaving themselves exactly as they should if I turn on the load it's currently set to a constant resistance uh, mode and uh, it's set to 10 ohms so if I turn this on notice that the output um, barely changes now it didn't before too much it was just that it was off by several millivolts um, so it's looking like the fix um, getting rid of this noise has also uh, improved the uh, effectively the accuracy uh, and really the resolution of the power supply as well and so it's well worth um, performing this fix and might even be uh, indicative of whether you need to apply this even if your, your, your supply is not resetting if you're getting these little jumps in the millivolt range then it uh, could be that um, your machine needs to have this uh, fix uh, applied to it um, but uh, as I say it's now performing extremely well it's giving uh, very good consistent results same with current I've done some uh, testing on the uh, current output and it's, uh, it's the same I can set it now to uh, within uh, one milliamp and previously I was having the same issue with the milliamp range in that it was um, you couldn't really set it to the nearest milliamp it was jumping by uh, a few milliamps and it was fairly random each time you set the same value you get a slightly different reading uh, and, and same with volts whereas now every time I set uh, one volt I'm getting something uh, very close to one volt and previously had I selected one volt again I'd get a slight change in the reading whereas now it's staying exactly the same and same when I turn it on and off it's coming back with pretty much exactly the same uh, output it, as I say it was fairly stable in terms of the noise output was fairly low from the uh, voltage output terminals but it uh, just couldn't be set particularly accurately um, so um, quite pleased with it at the moment I'm just a bit aggravated that uh, I had to spend several days sorting this out myself and especially considering that Rigel uh, seem to have been aware of the problem and how to correct it admittedly their fix is not particularly uh, pretty it's uh, kind of a bodge which is surprising considering um, the subscriber sent me an image of what he had and his machine is five years newer than mine um, so it's uh, strange that five years on they were still uh, bodging the supplies rather than having a proper fix for it um, but either way if you have a Rigel DP832 and you've got this problem of it constantly resetting itself then if you watch my previous videos in this series it's a very easy fix to apply um, you can do it in just 15-20 uh, minutes you don't need to take the entire front board out you can um, just uh, unscrew the front panel uh, fold it down and then solder the capacitor in place and uh, as I say it does uh, seem at the moment to have been a hundred percent successful repair so uh, fingers crossed this will carry on working if it does throw up any errors or any resets or anything in the future then uh, I'll let you know but uh, as I say it's looking extremely promising so far